Uh, Gary, uh, when listening to your presentation, you are saying that the bacteria in our gut reflect what we eat. Is this right? If we eat a high-fat diet, we have different bacteria as compared if we are eating a high-fiber diet. Yeah, there is definitely an impact of what you eat on the type of microbes that live in your gut. Um, it is a complex story because we can't predict exactly the types of microbes and how they respond, but there definitely is a relationship between what you eat and what's actually there. But then I listened to you and you're saying obese people have less bacterial richness in their gut, they have less varieties of bacteria than lean people. Where's the hen and the egg? Yes, that's, a, that's an excellent question because it's possible that the disease is that, the, that individuals are more obese because they have less bacteria. But equally plausible and I think even more plausible is that obese people in general are eating different types of food that could affect the microbiota in a way that makes them have fewer numbers than somebody who is healthy and lean. So an example of this would be eating a lot of vegetables, fiber, and fruit. That seems to increase the numbers of organisms in the gut, but then that's also associated with, a, with, with better health, so you're more lean. So there is that problem with cause and effect, really knowing which is the chicken and which is the egg, but at the end of the day, um, it's probably a little bit of both, but I tend to favor the fact that diet may be the primary driver of what is growing in your gut. And when you have a disease, if you have inflammatory bowel disease, is there any chance to modify your uh, microbiota through food or supplements? Or we, we think that uh, that may be a possibility. If we, if we believe that diet can alter the composition and the function of the microbiota, then it makes perfect sense that we should be able to do it in various disease processes, including inflammatory bowel disease. What we don't know is um, in what way we should modify the microbiota in inflammatory bowel disease to maintain health or to improve health, and nor do we know the best way to go about doing that. But that's what a lot of scientists are thinking very deeply about trying to understand. But if they think deeply, when do you think we can repeat this interview and you will know more? I think that we will, we as well as other investigators are actually looking a lot at, for example, defined formula diets. And my hope is that within a year, maybe even less, we will have uh, much more information because we're, we're doing those types of studies right now. And formula diets, would this would be diets where you just eat the formula when you have IBD? You just live on the formula or is formula part of your diet? It is, it's interesting because in our study, we had some individuals that were exclusively eating the formula, but then we also had people that were actually eating things on the side that we actually didn't know about until we began to analyze the data. So in fact, it turns out that they were eating a not insignificant amount of whole food. Yet what we did observe was that those individuals tended to respond also. So our belief is that you don't have to eat 100% of the fine for diet. It could be it could be a, could be a supplement, but what we don't know is actually what that level has to be. Okay. And, and that's what we're trying to figure and out. And let's hope that these formulas will come to the market sometimes and be efficient. Yes, absolutely. That, that would be a tremendous advance, both for our patients and scientifically also. Okay, thank you. All right, excellent.